Hey ladies, welcome back to my channel, His Love, Her Home, where this mom talks love, learning, and truth when it comes to homeschool and motherhood. And today, I'm going to talk about what we are using for history in this school year. So, as far as where my sons are in history, I feel like they didn't really get much when they were in the public school system. So, for me most importantly for my seventh and eighth grader i kind of want to give them an overview of history from all the way from the ancient time to the present so and i'm choosing to do that because my eighth grader is going into the ninth grade next year and i kind of want him to have a roundabout um understanding of uh, what happened through history um touching a little bit on all things so if you want to say that the story of the world this year for us is an overview for my fourth grader he through classical conversation is actually in kind of volume two um the middle ages and yeah so let's get into it if you don't know already the story of the world um history for the classical child the story of the world itself has four volumes you can also get activity books and test books with it basically for my seventh and eighth grader they have all four of these books. I have recently changed history to a family subject because it seemed independently it would be too much for my seventh and eighth grader with the load that they are getting from their homeschool group. So this has um, turned into a family slash, you know, we work on it together during our family time. I know a lot of people choose to do history as a family subject. I wasn't really doing that because my little one already has memorization from history, but um, leaning more on the fact for his classical conversation group, it's not really um, history work or papers or book. It's just, you know, he's memorizing something that happened in history and then I have to find other resources. So with all of that, I figured because I have to read volume two as my fourth grader, we're just going to read it all to all four volumes together as a family. So what am I doing with this? The biggest thing for my seventh and eighth graders with the story of the world is going to be note taking. This is something that I'm really stressing this year because they are going to go off to high school and they need to know how to take notes. So uh, a lot of note taking and then through that note taking, I will orally quiz them and just discuss and go over the things that we learn because like I said this is really not gonna be like a um oh my gosh we're doing all these activities and papers and stuff for note taking they're gonna be taking down particular pieces of information the first one is F and F is for facts they're gonna be writing down facts as we find them um, in their book as I read them aloud or as I note them they're gonna be taking down facts. So when they write it in their notebook, they'll just write F and circle it, and then they will um, write down the fact. I'm training them to also take stuff like F for fact and you know make your own shortened ways to take notes, which helps when you're in college and you have to write a lot of things and the teacher is going at 85,000 miles an hour. The next one is P for people. So when we talk about important people, they will note take on the person. Um, the next one, something that I'm uh, getting from Classical Conversation in our group this year is called Digging Deeper. This is where um, at the end of our time together or at the end of the week, I will say your DD for the week, which is Digging Deeper, is um, to research this person or place or war. So Digging Deeper is basically going to be Maybe I need to take a pause in the curriculum or maybe there's a holiday coming and I just want to stop right here. I might give them a digging deeper assignment where they research a person that we really want to talk about or like the American Revolution or, you know, um, any particular war or place that I want them to really learn more about or if they want to learn about it because that is also an option that they can dig deeper on that topic and be free to do that during their time the other things that they will use for um, note-taking is w for wars m for maps or g for geography just you know giving them options of when we're reading how to note take how to do it the short way making abbreviations in their heads so they know how to take the notes and so for me the biggest thing out of history this year is not necessarily memorizing and knowing all the things that happened in history, but it's definitely note-taking 
and um, in that note taking I'm going to reference you know other things and that's what it's gonna basically look like this year the last big thing that they're gonna be doing for each book is a project so like for the ancient times they're either gonna have to like make a pharaoh head or build a pyramid and like write me information on it that will be their big project at the end of each book for my fourth grader he will just have one big project to do for volume two for the middle um, ages and yeah that is kind of what it's gonna look like I did pull out resources that I have that I am kind of gonna use with each book so to go with the story of the world and let me just say I'm gonna show you a lot of books but these are resources that I just have built over the years or got um, over time that I'm using to pull out more information we are not in any way reading um, all of these books our goal is to read this book and a separate read aloud with our history books and that is about the only books that we're gonna fully read through okay so with the story of the world we are currently reading the bronze bow and I have this on audio too because we spend a lot of time in the car my older ones go to group on Mondays and Wednesdays so um, and it's about a 30 minute drive each way so we get in about um, an hour of audio reading on Mondays and Wednesdays out of the same book so we might do a chapter in the car and then we do a chapter at home and then the car home so it were it's really working out because we're moving through the book and that's what I like <laughs> um, honestly I wish I would have got the audios for these it depends on how the school year continues to go I might actually get the audio for these books but let me move on um, this video might be a little long because I do have a lot of books to show you so sit back get some tea coffee whatever you like <laughs> and enjoy it so also to go with book one I have the thrifty guide to ancient Greece and this is just to pull out more information these books are by Jonathan W Stokes and this is for middle grade it says that is for middle grade um, ages 8 to 12 they also have um, ancient Rome and um, medieval times which I might get for my other one out there um, I also have the one for ancient Rome um, these I will get for them um, I would like my older ones to do a project on one of the ancients like ancient Egypt ancient Rome um, whichever one they choose and then I will probably get them a book like this and then they will read through it and they will basically build or do a project based on one particular area or people I should say um, the next book I have is a single shard and this is I was gifted this by sunlight to do a review on it and I will see where this fits in but we are gonna read this this year and I will have a video coming letting you know how I like um, the way sunlight has organized the reading and all of that stuff so I have that coming as well probably mid-year um, the next book the story of the world is the Middle Ages this is the book I told you that my fourth grader is on it's from the fall of Rome to the rise of the Renaissance um, all of these are by Susan Wise Bauer which I do not know if I'm saying that right don't beat me up but <laughs> anyway um, to go with that um, I'm gonna be pulling stuff from the who was history of the world and then that this one I don't have many things for so it's like a same thing with the ancient one I don't have a lot of resources for the Middle Ages and the ancient but um, at this point I feel like I'm not buying anything we're probably just gonna fill it in with videos and if not read aloud um, presently I don't know what book we're gonna read with this so so when you get to book three and this is more so like starting American history um, this is when I have a lot of resources for this as far as like once we start this we really be digging into American history um, if my kids feel like they like ancient history more they will be free to do a full curriculum on it next year so in this year like I said we are kind of explorers of history and that's what it is other books that I got to go with this is um, the journey of York and this is um, the unsung hero of Lewis and Clark expedition by Hassan Davis if you can see that I'll put it a little bit closer 
And to go along with that, I have what is the Constitution. I have what was the Lewis and Clark Expedition. So that other book goes with it. Great way to incorporate some um, African American history. Um, I have the Thrifty Guides to the American Revolution. They actually both have a copy of this because I might make them do a project on the American Revolution. It's up to them, really. And then the last book, this is the biggest one, which I figure if we do not finish this, we will just go into the summer. And then like wherever we stop, I will make them do a project on that. The reason why I'm making them do a project is because that's basically how they're going to get graded between their notes and their project. That is going to be their grade for the semester. So um, I'm saying semester for the... <laughs> That is basically going to be their grade for like every quarter. Okay? So, yeah. In the book, you've seen this, Survivors of the Holocaust. I actually have this to go with this last book. So, that is the story of the world and how I'm going to use it in my homeschool. It's basically for them to explore um, history from the time it started up to the present and for them to really, really get a grasp on note taking while learning through history. Also study skills and stuff like that. Now I have a ton of other books to show you and I'm just showing these because these are history resources that I plan to incorporate and put into our school year. First one is the Louisiana Purchase and this might be for my fourth grader just to read. I might not take anything from this. This is probably going to be for my fourth grader. This book is by Peter and Connie Roop. The next one is The Game of Silence. I don't know if I'm going to make this a read aloud um, for the year, but we will see how it goes. Next thing we have is When the Stars Scatter. And this is about kids in a refugee camp in Kenya. It's a graphic novel. If we don't read this, I will just put it out for my kids to read and they will definitely read this. This is by Victoria Jameson and Omar Muhammad. This is another resource. This is presidents in the book. They do start um, incorporating presidents when you do get into American history with the story of the world. So I will be pulling out information about George Washington, you know, the first president once it started. And then, um, yeah, that's how we'll use that. We haven't really done a study of the presidents. Um, it's something that I feel like we will do eventually, but it's not a rush for me. So the next one I have is a young people's history of the United States. Now, I really want them to read this themselves and it does go into some stuff. But as far as for the story of the world, I'm going to go in here to pull in more so of an experience from other people and stuff like that. So it doesn't just seem we're reading one source as far as when history is concerned. The next thing I have for my fourth grader. This is the Ready to Read Secrets of American History Collection. Do not, do not think that because your child is in the third or fourth grade that they cannot read these. These are, um, level three is actually mega star reader and inside of these books they are, there are words so don't think that you know ready to read these are some great things that you can pick up from like barnes and nobles and stuff like that um i believe that i got these off of zoo lily if believe it or not and they zoo lily is something where things come things go that is another place where i do get educational products from um but basically they have one for the revolutionary war they have world war ii they have the civil war they have World War One, and they have monuments and landmarks. And these I will throw in once we're reading. I will throw these in. I like these because uh, when it comes to writing, I can just give him one book and I'll be like, oh, I want you to write me a paragraph based on what you read. So this helps me keep it small, keep it little, but yet get in some extra skills. The next books, I'm just going to show you the titles, no explanation, just extra stuff that I have that... Um, we will just read aloud their quick books. The first one is Ben's Revolution. The next one is Building the Erie Canal. The next one was If You Were a Kid During the Civil Rights Movement. This is the whole book, The Civil War for Kids and Projects. So this has projects. This might be a, a good place for them to have to get some project ideas. So they might use that. And then it says, America's Tea Parties. 
And then the last one is Fort Moose. The last thing I have to show for you, and this is where like geography and maps and or wars is gonna come in as far as my seventh and eighth grader. Um, I got this DK History of the World Map by Map. When I say this book is a gem, it is a gem. I actually got this uh, on a Black Friday. It was 20 bucks and the regular price is like 50. So this was something that I bought where I knew that my kids would use when they got in older grades or when they got in high school. But I will just show you um, what it looks like inside. There's like a two page layout for each um, war basically. And um, it maps out where, it maps out, shows you exactly how the war happened, where did it start, where it end up. So I really do like that. And it also gives you information. So for me, this book was a gem when I found it. Um, again, it's DK History of the World, map by map. Um, I will try, <laughs> it's hard for me to link all these books, but I will try to link everything that I mentioned in the description below. So if you want to grab any of these for your homeschool, it's already listed there for you. Again, thanks for coming along and listening. I hope I wasn't too long winded, but as you can see, our history this year is just going to be about becoming explorers of history and learning how to note take and with some fun projects. So I will update you as the year goes along. We are only still in our third week of school. Thank you guys for following along. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. And guys, I'll check you out next time. Bye.